Okay, perfect. All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SoFlow Soccer. This is my first ever, as you can tell, my first ever live stream on YouTube. And I just thought I should try this out uh, instead of recording a traditional video. But yeah, uh, this is me just maybe an hour after Inter Miami have played their match against the New York, but or I shouldn't even say play their match, just got absolutely humiliated in front of the Red Bull Arena. Uh, Four to nothing, Lewis Morgan hat trick, and and um, it's honestly just very disappointing all around. So uh, there's a, a couple of things to talk about. I'm not going to make this live stream too long. Uh, I do have a couple of notes and some uh, topics that I do want to cover really quickly, and then you know we'll just call it a day. So uh, first of all, yeah, Lewis Morgan and the Red Bulls are a problem. The, these guys. Besides the fact that Lewis Morgan used to play for Inter Miami about two years ago, we traded him for whatever reason. Uh, he was literally probably one of the best players that we had at the club at the time. Uh, that was back when Iwain used to play in Pizarro and all them. Um, I don't know. I don't remember exactly what I said about the Red Bulls in the last video that, that I made about um, uh, for for our last uh, game that we played in the MLS regular season. But I do remember saying that it was going to be difficult to beat the Red Bulls. Now, I didn't think it was going to be this difficult. After seeing them play today, I think they are true contenders to finish pretty high in the table. I don't know about MLS Cup, but they are genuine threats in the in this Eastern Conference table. Um, they were pressing Inter Miami pretty much the entire 90 minutes, and we just couldn't handle it. And I think that I've said it multiple times, Inter Miami are just really bad in transition. Uh, they are not able to handle the press, uh, come, especially with New York Red Bulls. I, there was also a lot of things that that come into factor that we'll get to in a little bit, but I think the rain was just not helping at all. Um, it didn't look like, especially with Suarez, you can tell it on Luis Suarez's face more than everyone else, but it, didn't, it just didn't look like uh, the players wanted to be there playing that rain. And um, yeah, it's just, Everything went wrong. Everything went wrong uh, today. So I think what's really notable is that uh, let's take a look at the starting 11. Let me see if I could try to pull it up here. Like I said, this is my first time going live. I'm going to see if I can pull it up like this. Okay. Yeah. So I somewhat did that. Okay, cool. So this is the starting lineup. I got this on Foot Mob. It's uh, it's it's like that five back formation. It's different than here and than how Inter Miami published it on their social pages. But this is pretty much how they played in the game. So I wanted to pull this up. But pretty much we have Dos Santos making his first start professionally for us, which is very interesting. Well, obviously it's not very interesting. He's pretty much the only option we have. Jane Callender is out with the United States national team. Um, then we have Noah Allen playing center back with. Kritsov and Aviles in the center back positions. Uh, in the midfield, Alba, Sunderland, Busquets, Gressel, and Taylor. Uh, and then the top two, Luis Suarez and Gambana. So it's not a terribly rotated team. It's not a terribly rotated team. Yes, we don't have Drake Callender. Yes, we don't have Redondo. Um, yes, we don't have um, Diego Gomez. But this is not a terribly rotated team. Like This is something that we're familiar with that inter miami are familiar with now i can say that on the bench we have nobody on the bench we have absolutely nobody it's it's uh, the backup goalkeeper franco negri came back or is i guess is progressing back from his injury he did play in the second team uh not that long ago on their opening day montenegro tyler hall these are all players from the b team um so and even the players that came off the bench leo afonso got a brace for the uh for the second team on their opening day, Yannick Bright and then Sailor, he's not really a B team player, but he doesn't really play. And then Abadal, who made his uh, debut also. So, yeah, it's not a rotated squad, but the problem was that I don't know what Inter Miami were trying to play at. Pretty much, like the midfield, as much as we had Sunderland, Busquets, and Gressel in the midfield, I felt like the midfield was just not there. Busquets kept playing pretty, pretty deep. And Gressel on defense was non-existent. Sunderland didn't do bad. I can't complain about Sunderland um, from, from, I mean, you can't really expect too much from him, but I think he was probably the best midfielder out of all of them. Um, 
and then Jordi Alba was Jordi Alba. But let me talk about that really quickly. Let me go back to my face. All the goals that the Red Bull scored against Inter Miami were just straight up counterattacks. We were we were given the ball purposely. The Red Bulls wanted us to have the ball, and our defense and our midfield just couldn't handle it. We even like sometimes we even saw like Suarez and Campana like coming dropping back on defense um, to try to get the ball, but we couldn't get out of our own half. And it was really, really frustrating. We couldn't put a pass together. We couldn't even we couldn't put a couple of, of passes together to make a play. And it was just very frustrating, very difficult to watch. So I feel like there's just no real system. There's no real tactic that Tata is putting into the team. I feel like the, he just kind of throws in five five midfielded players with and then Taylor and Alba to play the wings and then it's like okay like try to do whatever you can which is at the professional level like sure but I think that there's just no system I think the system the tactic was literally to do over um to do overlaps to do to for to have Alba and Robert Taylor do overlaps and have them cross the ball in which never worked by the way they would always try to find either Campana back post or maybe Suarez back post but that would never ever work so and it's very predictable it's very readable and the Red Bulls were able to lock it down very very quickly um and like I said on transitioning back on defense it was either too slow or, or too quick like one of the goals where um, what's his name? Where Morgan literally sprinted down the left hand side of the pitch and nobody was on defense. And then I think it was Gressel who came back, who tried to recover and overcommitted and completely left um Lewis Morgan to make a pass and then score. So it was just it's really bad transitioning. I feel like they they give up really easily. They were just unmotivated and it was just not good. Um talking about some some other factors. Um, the fact that we have a lot of players, this is no excuse, by the way, of why we play terribly, but we do have a lot of players out on international duty, right? So we have obvious, well, Messi's out injured, but we have obviously Drake Callender. We have Diego Gomez. We have, uh, what's his name? Federico. We also have, there was Borhalin, which doesn't really matter. And then Boatwright, who doesn't also doesn't really matter. Not that they don't matter. It's just that they don't get any game time, right? So, David Ruiz, I said David Ruiz, did I say David Ruiz, Diego Gomez, and Federico Redondo? Those are like, those are all midfielders, all key young midfielders that we need in the squad to perform. Without, I feel, without those guys, it just showed today that we don't have a midfield at all. So, we could either have the best midfield one day and a terrible midfield the next. Um, and, the, you know, obviously, we still have Cremacian and we, Ian Frey is still out. And Facundo Farias is still out. It's just, we have a lot of players missing. But like I said, it's not, it's just not an excuse for the way that we play tonight. I just think we need to actually come up with a tactic that isn't what Tata has been doing, especially today. Like, the tactic cannot just simply be, okay, have Jordi Alba overlap on the, on the left flank cross the ball to the far post to Campana or cross it near post to Suarez or whoever and then expect that to work. It's not going to work. It's it's just not working. And we need to find a way to prevent us getting countered and pressed heavily. Like we have to do something about it. Transitioning into defense has to be that has to be something I don't know if it's something that you can just train them to do or completely change the defense. But I thought we did well against who was it? I think it was DC who was pressing us pretty, pretty uh, heavy and early on into the game, at least for like maybe 30 minutes um, or 20 to 30 minutes. And I thought we did really, really well. We played a lower line. We didn't get caught on the counter. They were pressing us hard, but we were we managed to shut them out. And But it, it, I don't know if it was just the weather. I don't know if it was just because we were missing. I mean, like we were missing Messi, and I it, we didn't lose because we didn't have Messi. If that's that, if for people who are saying that, just don't know in Miami who are who literally just watched the the team and whatever, or they're just haters. They're literally just haters. But anyway, um, yeah, no, I have no idea. So they just couldn't string anything together, and it was just really frustrating. But yeah, so the tactic really needs to change. 
um, or some tactic needs to be developed for these guys to to play, put something together. Because I think off the top of my head, the only real solid opportunities that we had came at the last, literally the last play of the first half. We had two opportunities and they were also, they were still crosses into the box, which we've been doing. I've already talked about that, but yeah, crosses into the box and they haven't worked, but those were the best chances that we had all game. And um, yeah, Noah Allen got, got denied a goal. It sucks for him, but at the end of the day, it was a foul on on before the play. The officials are something else. Also, it's it's a completely different factor. I we didn't lose because it was poor officiating. Um, so I'm not even going to talk about the officials, uh, even though there were like some calls missed. Let's see what else I had. But yeah, no, I mean, for for the young guys that came off the bench like Bright and like that Brazilian striker, I forget his name. I think it's a Afonso. Um, yeah, Leo Afonso. Um, they didn't do bad off the bench. I really liked how Bright looked. Um, I liked how Bright looked in that midfield, to be honest. I mean, like, he didn't, he played like maybe, what, 30 minutes? Um, he honestly didn't do bad and probably was the best midfield or one of the best midfielders. I thought him and Sunderland were like the two best midfielders out of that bunch. And Bright only played 30 minutes. And Afonso came off, I, I came on also, I think, in the 60th minute. And, um, he he was making in some runs. He was he was throwing in his body, so he was playing pretty physical. I don't. He didn't really do enough, honestly, for me to give like a proper. Oh yeah, he did okay or whatever for the time that he had. But um, I think it's uh, I think it's okay. I mean, he honestly should have started bright. I would have. I probably would have started bright over Gressel. I don't know why. I think in a situation like this, Gressel shouldn't have been playing at the center mid position, even though I know that the prefers him in the midfield, I just don't think that he should have played in midfield today. I think he should have, they, he should have been moved to right back. They probably, they should have played four at the back. I much rather would have had Allen left back, put uh Kritzoff Aviles at the center back positions with Gressel at the right back and then put Taylor, um, Sunderland. Uh, yeah. Taylor Sunderland Busquets, and then maybe like Alba and then Suarez up top or something. I don't know. But I would definitely play Alba like left mid, left wing with Robert Taylor, right mid, right wing. You could play, either play two up top or play with the solo. I don't know. It, that's up. That's like, I guess, personal preferences. But I would have definitely switched that out. I didn't I didn't like how Taylor played. Uh, it just wasn't enough. I And in the defense, I think the I thought Ivila's was the worst i thought th that was avilis's worst performance i think i've at in the club so far and he's had a terrible preseason right i think avilis had a really bad game he just messed up i'm trying to look at the stat here he messed up quite a bit he messed up quite a bit when it came to passing or clearing the ball uh, out of our half or just passing the ball out of our defense it was just so so bad i think probably the best center back that played was maybe Kritzoff. I and he's always I always kind of talk smack about him because of the fact that he is slow and slow in transition. But honestly, he did okay for the performance that I mean that everyone had. He did okay. But yeah, no. At the end of the day, everybody played poorly. Nobody was on their game. Um, and it's just a really bad day for Inter Miami. Uh, hopefully, I mean, we have our good days. We have our bad days. I mean, it's, it's just bound to happen. I mean, we, we beat Orlando city five, nothing. That's probably not going to happen again. Right. Like if we were to beat if like, it, and uh, yeah, no, but the New York rebels are a problem. And I didn't, I kind of, I don't know. I don't want to say I underestimated them, but I, I didn't realize how good they were going to be until they played us. I mean, they could have just played us on our bad day and, you know, but I think at the end of the day, that pressing, I think being out coached like that and out uh, uh, outplayed, um, it really makes them look like a real threat. So I don't know. But looking at the table, let me switch back to um, this. So looking at the table, let me move my camera this way. We have Inner Miami uh, moving down to second place. We were first for quite a bit, actually, probably the longest we've ever had in in the club history uh with the columbus crew in first place obviously they uh and they even have less games played so that's really really worrying the red bulls also have a game less um yeah 
I mean, at the end of the day, guys, it's, it doesn't really, I don't want to say it doesn't matter where we finish, but it doesn't matter where we, whether we finish first in the Eastern Conference, whether we finish third, fourth, fifth, as long as we get in a playoff spot, I think Miami are going to be chilling. And, you know, this, it's not something that we should really be worried about if you're an inner Miami fan. Um, I think like, I think they just, I think that's their goal at the end of the day. I feel like they're not wanting to finish first in the conference. I think their goal is just to get placed as high as they can in the playoffs to, to the point where they can get maybe a lower seed opponent, um, and then, yeah, and then just kind of rely on the knockout, you know, the whole knockout rules to win the MLS Cup in the Eastern Conference, you know what I'm saying? So maybe that's their goal. But, yeah, the next team we have, we're going to be uh, playing another New York team, the New uh, New York City FC. This one's going to be at home, though. It's on the 30th. That's next Saturday, exactly a week from now. And uh, let me switch back. And so that, I feel like, is going to be a more winnable game. Um, the, uh, NYCFC are one and three out of four games. They haven't really been performing too well. Um, they still have, they is Magno out. They still have Maxi Morales out for pretty much like half of the season. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm more realistic about the NYCFC game than I guess I was for the New York Red Bulls. I'm pretty sure I predicted that we were going to beat the Red Bulls, I think two, one or something, but yeah, no, that was just never going to happen as soon as the game started, especially when we conceded that early goal. Early goals have been a, a problem for us also. But anyways, yeah, so out of out of their last four games, they lost the first three, and they just had their most recent win against Toronto, which I think they barely scraped, if I remember correctly. So, um, and I think that was at home. And so I think New, uh, New York City, I think, oh, well, now that I'm thinking about it, our record against New York City, I don't think is good. I think we've pretty much lost every time we played NYCFC. Um, yeah, here, let me switch back. Boom. If you if you look here, in our heads-to-heads, out of 10 games, we've won one time. And that was, I don't even know when that was. When was that? That was on August 13th, 2022, in a regular season game. We won 3-2. And that was back when we had this team. This team is probably this team is definitely better than the team we had. <laughs> no, okay, no, I can't say that. This is not a bad team either. So, yeah, this is back in this is back when we had Ponsuelo. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, we only won once, and that was two years ago. Um, I think our most recent defeat was like during the Noche de Or. No, it wasn't the Noche de Or. It was uh, I think that was what it was called. It was that friendly game where Messi uh, they presented Messi with something. Um, or when they presented Messi with the bounty or not something. I knew what it was, but I don't remember what the event was called. But anyways, uh, this is a game that we're going to be playing at Chase Stadium. So we're going to have the home advantage. We're not going to, we're probably not going to have to worry about rain and things like that. And if we, even if we are, and even if we do, I think we just still have that home advantage. There's no, I, it's, it's, I don't want to say NYCFC are not going to have a good season this year, in my opinion. They're not going to have a good season this year. In my opinion, there shouldn't be... I don't see a universe where we lose to NYCFC this season. It, it can't... Like, I just don't see... Like, if I was Doctor Strange in, in the in Endgame, out of the 11 million possibilities, I, maybe, that maybe there's one. But I honestly don't see it. It got really dark all of a sudden. Jeez. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I don't see it happening. So I want to give a prediction for it. I'm going to say, I mean, if we have Messi back, if we have Messi back for that game, I feel like it's a, it's almost a guaranteed win. Like I, if, with Messi in the team, uh, there's no international duty. I'm pretty sure if it's next week, I think we should be fine. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think like there's anything really impacting the squad uh, for that week. No, I don't. 
Yeah, no. There's a bunch of friendlies, but I think we'll, we should. Everybody should be fully fit and fully back by that time. But anyways, um, I kind of went over to all the points that I wanted to talk about. Um, I just really hope that that can really sort his stuff out. I see a lot of maybe tweets and things like that, and people saying, "Oh, they want that that out." That that is a bad coach. I'm still I'm still that that in. I'm not gonna just kind of. Even though it's really frustrating sometimes with Tata, uh, I, I just don't want to kick him out uh, just yet. Um, but um, I don't know. It, it's it's definitely he's definitely pushing the limits a little bit uh, with these tactics and with these formations and whatnot that he's putting out out there. But we're just going to have to see. I definitely see Inter Miami beating NYCFC. So. Hopefully this uh, stream wasn't too long. I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and a comment down below if you agree or disagree with anything that I said. Or comment down below if there's something that happened during the game that I haven't discussed already. Um, I have posted a recent video about me vlogging or kind of vlogging my experience going to Italy versus Venezuela's friendly game at Chase Stadium. I was hired uh, to cover that event as like a videographer. I don't do a lot of video. I don't do any videography. Honestly, I'm very new to the video scene. Um, I'm mainly a photographer and but I'm really trying and I'm really trying to practice. So and that's what these YouTube videos are for. And that's what that experience is for. But yeah, I've recorded my experiences and uh, put it uh, put it all together in a video. So so I really hope you enjoy that. That'll be in my channel somewhere. I'm pretty sure that's going to be like the cover page on my channel. So make sure you check that out if you're interested in that. If anything, uh, check out all the match reviews that I do for Inter Miami. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one.